It is great to welcome back again, I believe his third visit with us on the program. He's got a brand new novel out, one of his great Pike Logan thrillers. This one's called Ring of Fire, and we're going to be talking with Brad Taylor now. And uh, Brad joined us by telephone. Brad, good to talk with you again. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. Yeah, I kind of checked the archives. I think this is your, like I said, your, your third visit with us. Originally around this time of year, you have a, a novel come out. Although I think we did the last one about the soldier last uh, summer sometime, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm doing two books a year now, so it's... Uh, it, Depends. You're, you're a busy guy. Either you're talking to guys like me or you're behind the computer writing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, congratulations not only on uh, the success of the previous books, but this Pike Logan uh, character has uh, really kind of taken off, hasn't he? It has. It's uh, been a surprise to me, so <laughs> more power to him. I'm glad I can write something people like to read. As, as I usually say when, when we talk uh, about novels, I don't like to give too much plot away, but I know it, it deals with uh, uh, undercover operatives, and uh, this is actually kind of the 15th anniversary of uh, 9-11, so the, the plot has to deal with that as well, doesn't it? It does. It actually came about uh, last summer. There was a lot of discussion on the redacted pages of Saudi complicity into the original 9-11 attack, uh, whether they're going to declassify them, whether they're going to allow families to sue Saudi Arabia, all that was going on. And I thought to myself, you know, if there was complicity, I did a lot of research on it, there's a lot of smoke. There's not any, I mean, firm fire, but there is enough smoke that if there was complicity and we didn't do anything about it and those guys were still out there, what would they do? And that's on the 15th anniversary. They're planning another attack. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how uh, your characters, uh, what happened. See, well, the, the, Pan yeah, the Panama Papers were released last spring. And I, when that happened, Panama Papers was an enormous digital release of uh, offshore banking, nefarious banking methods that eclipsed. Uh, it was an enormous release. And people in the United States, it didn't make a lot of news here. But right. if you stack WikiLeaks and uh, Snowden and the Target breach and the Chinese hack and North Korea, you put them all together, the Panama Papers eclipsed it by an order of magnitude. And I thought to myself, that that would uh, affect the task force because they would probably use something like that as a shield for their cover organizations. And uh, the more I worked it, then with the, the uh, redacted pages of the congressional report, I thought, well, the terrorists would probably use it too. And Pike is trying to protect the task force and ends up stumbling upon something much bigger. Yeah, and again, for maybe who weren't with us before, the character, and, and kind of based on what you did as a career in the Army, right, works for uh, undercover uh, operations. Uh, uh, internationally, right? Yeah, Pike Logan's works for a counterterrorist organization that I kind of invented. It's fictional. It's called a task force. And, that, and the main reason was I didn't want anybody to think I was writing about an organization I'd actually served in. Right. Uh, just changing the names because everything I did was classified. So I invented this thing out of whole cloth, and that's what he works for. Can, can you, when you write a, a plot like this, you just mentioned, you know, obviously in your you know, work history uh, in real life, you, you had to deal with classified information. Can you write a plot without giving too much away uh, that is classified? Do you have to be careful about that, or, or after a while, can you, well, you certainly... incorporate that? No, no, not at all. I never incorporate anything as classified. The, mm -hmm. the, you certainly have to watch your P's and Q's, but the, the truth of the matter is that with the way technology is and the way that the world is advancing, uh, it's fairly easy to come up with methods of what I would do and what I wouldn't do. The, the hardest thing is when you have a, a system that works, be it if you're a police officer and you have a system that here's how we investigate a crime and is how we always catch the criminals, uh, or if you're chasing terrorists and this is how we always see the terrorists, that's great in real world, but in writing books, people get sick of that. I'm like, okay, here he goes again doing the same <laughs> thing he did last time. So you have to come up with new and unique ways of, okay, how would he find this guy? What would, what would the clue be? How, what would he use technologically-wise uh, to do something different? And like you said, 15 years uh, you know, doesn't seem like that when you, you know, we all lived through it, but that's a long time ago, particularly in, in technology. So, uh, so much has changed even since 2001, hasn't it? It has. In fact, the, one of the most unique things in this book, The Ring of Fire, uh, I used Pokemon Go. The, when Pokemon <laughs> Go came out, it had a, an enormous zero-day vulnerability with Gmail, and I was going to use that solely. Uh, and then... Uh, my daughter's boyfriend was, came in, he's just downloaded Pokemon Go. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm an expert on Pokemon Go, and I use it in the book. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it. I, I go nowhere near those games because I don't know a lot about them. But, yeah, it's interesting. It all kind of ties together, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's some of the stories of using Pokemon Go are funny. My, my biggest fear was that they're using Pokemon Go in Spain. And as I was writing the book, it had not been released in Spain yet. And I thought, boy, I hope they release it before this book comes out. <laughs> and they, they eventually did. That's where the people go around with their cell phones searching for items around their town. Isn't that basically the, the, what that game is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they, there's gyms that they go fight in, and that's why I, I created a fake gym for them to fight in so we could capture a terrorist. It's like a sophisticated scavenger hunt. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit again about uh, you know Pike Logan and, and uh, Jennifer is his assistant, so there's always a, a nice storyline that goes on there as well. That relationship has developed, hasn't it? It has, and that's that's actually one of the hardest things about writing a series is that the characters have to grow. Uh, you know, you, they can't be stagnant. They in real world and human existence, you, everybody changes and grows. So I have to continually march those guys forward, and it's uh, it's actually gotten easier because when I first started writing the book, uh, Pike Logan was kind of a flawed guy, uh, which is unlike me, and so I had to <laughs> constantly project how would he be, how would he be. Well, now he's kind of come back. The redemption occurred, and uh, he's more normal, and so it's easier to write because now he's more like me. Yeah, like you said, the, and uh, again, I think we've talked about it, and I like to ask other novelists as well, that the character changes, but it also goes in different directions than you probably originally thought, right? Does that happen to you? Yeah, it definitely does. There's things that happen. That, in fact, there's characters that uh, I write a character, Aaron and Shoshana are two Israelis that uh, were in Days of Rage, and I fully intended to kill them at the end of the book. They were just going to be one-offs. And I liked them too much. <laughs> the characters, by the time I was done, I was like, I don't want to kill them. <laughs> and now they're kind of fan favorites. They come back every two or three books. Do you get a lot of feedback, uh, obviously, with the social media, Facebook, and all that? I, I guess you do, right? Do they, they give you suggestions of what uh, you should do in future stories with the fans? Uh, they do. I don't, I, rarely do I get some kind of specific suggestion, i.e., you know, something along the lines of, you should do A, B, C, and D because of these reasons. But I do get a lot of, you know, you need to change this or you need to have Jennifer do that, things like that. Yeah, because they get involved with the, the relationship between the two characters as well. It, it's, it's, so they, they, get, uh, they get emotionally involved a little bit, don't they, the, the readers? Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 And I was surprised to see how much Aaron Shoshana resonated. It, you know, when I brought them back, I think it was, that was the last book, Ghost of War. Everybody loved it. I'm like, huh, surprised about that. I was going to kill him. <laughs> now, you've written several of these uh, in the series. Do you keep a, a, a track or a record somehow so you don't repeat a, a storyline, or do you just have that all in your head? You, you sort of know where it's going in the future books. I have uh, the storylines I have in my head. I, I know I don't know where it's going in future books. I give everything I have to the individual book I'm writing. In the right. future, be damned. I, you know, I, I wish I was smart enough to save something for another book, but I, <laughs> I throw it all in the same book. But one thing I have started to keep track of is, you know, when you start writing, you create a universe, and every time you put a board on the page, you make that universe smaller. Uh, if you give a character blue eyes, he's got blue eyes forever. Right. He's five foot ten. He's five foot ten forever. <laughs> and I have made mistakes in the past where uh, the very first book, uh, Kurt Hale, who's the commander of the task force, was married, and then uh, eight books later, he was a geographic bachelor. And I started getting emails. What happened to his wife? And I was like, Was he married? <laughs> <laughs> so now I do have to keep track of that. Yeah, I just wonder if you're like, you have a character Bible or something like that where you, you, know, you re re go back and say, well, did that, what, did I, what did he do in a previous story so you don't you know, change right. it on yourself? I had to go back and say, you know, even to the point where if I bring somebody back from five books ago, I now have to, he's written in stone. So I have to right. go back to that book and say, okay, how tall was he? What did he look like? So I don't <laughs> screw that up. Well, again, this one is called Ring of Fire, another one of the great Pike Logan thrillers. And we've been talking with uh, Brad Taylor again. And Brad, uh, give out that website. And I know the fans out there will want to get more information, but maybe we have some new listeners as well. So uh, what's your website? Sure. It's uh, bradtaylorbooks.com. And if they go to the website, they can read an excerpt of any of the books, including Ring of Fire. Great. Brad, congratulations again. And we look forward to uh, the next one whenever it comes out. So I'm sure sometime in 2017 we'll talk to you then. But thanks for being with us today. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America, isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.